So one of the one of the interesting things um, about European history is that it makes a lot more sense if you understand Europeans as basically drunken people that couldn't read um, until Christianity showed up. Uh, if you look at it that way, um, and, and they were drunk because, because water was, clean water was difficult to find, alcohol was safer to drink. And so even today you've got, you know, mostly alcoholism is a huge problem. Um, but, you know, one of the reasons you go to war is because you don't have a legal system in place. And the Europeans were going to war all the time. Um, and so, it, it, you know, whether it was the Huns they were concerned about, um, which then became the Ottoman Empire, uh, you really had this quest for gold, um, you know, just anything shiny. Um, and, of course, you had a tradition of building things, which happened all over the place. But um, the, what you notice when you look at all these different migrations um, is that, you know, just because Christianity showed up around, you know, the... I think about the fourth century, um, you know, you've got, here we go. Well, it showed up before then, obviously, right? But the Romans suppressed it. Uh, and so ultimately it wasn't until 313 that you actually had a, a, an alliance between the state and the church that allowed Christianity to, you know, grow in a sustainable way. But that doesn't mean that it was, you know, suddenly you had a Bible and then, you know, you, you were able to disseminate that knowledge to everybody. What was really happening here is that the, the church became the basis for knowledge. It became the store for knowledge. Um, and that's why you had a, you know, that's why the Catholic church in particular, um, you know, had such influence because it was basically melded with the state in Europe. And even today, uh, the Holy See uh, has uh, representatives that show up to these conferences in Europe, um, uh, you know, as a representative of the Catholic you know, sort of empire. And once you understand how that worked out, um, and you have to also understand that the printing press didn't show up until quite some time ago. And the reason for that um, is twofold. Uh, one, you had a, the establishment of, a, of a three orders right over here. Um, didn't really show up until you know, the French. Uh, didn't show up until 1000. Um, and then, you know, the French have a lot going for them, right? They had the French Revolution, which was essentially an anti-religious, anti anti-Christian revolution. Um, and, you know, that, that, of course, drove a lot of people to the West. It drove them out to, to Spain. It drove them out eventually uh, to the United States. Um, so you had all these different people, just essentially all these different movements that originated in constant warfare and constant migration, um, you know, just all over the place. And, but you have to remember that, you know, the Bible was in Latin. It wasn't a language that, that was accessible to most people. So even after the printing press, it wasn't until the Germans under Martin Luther uh, sort of demanded a wider dissemination of that knowledge um, that you really had the opportunity for more, um, just a, a better class of people, uh, simply because if you don't have something to read, and remember, there's no movies back then, there might have been a few plays, but if you don't have something to read and you're getting drunk all the time, chances are you're going to have a patriarchal society that's very much uh, going to, you know, very much going to just fighting quite a bit in between bursts of great creativity. And you can, so you can see why by the time, you know, Constantine showed up, uh, you can see why Christianity or anything, any, anything at that time, you know, would have been welcomed simply to uh, have a more sustainable system. And because it was a written language at some point, you were essentially in a place where you could have a legal system that didn't really exist before Christianity, but because it was in Latin, because all these different, you know, books were translated under the authority of a single church, um, you know, you obviously had a lot of corruption. And the United States, of course, came up with this idea of a separation of church and state because they were the ones that were you know, sort of kicked out of the UK. And so you understand a couple of things about when you study European history. Number one, you're dealing with drunk savages that were fighting all the time, number one. Number two, they were still drunk savages even after the adoption of Christianity because most of them could not read. And they could not read because a lot of that knowledge was, you know, you've got this idea of the church blessing the king. Well, that happened again because the church had access to this divine knowledge that apparently nobody else had. 
and that became the basis for supremacy and authority. And that continued, continued all the way up until the printing press, it continued all the way up until a German rebellion under Martin Luther. Well, you finally had the idea, I'm being interrupted by uh, We have children. You, know, Please. you want me to stop talking here, or, or what's uh, going on? All uh, hold. Okay, you want me to go over there? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. And so... Uh, out. No, no, this. Uh, you've got a group over there, basically. So that's why I'm moving in this direction. Um, so that's basically a lot of the history. Um, and so it hasn't been more than... a. 500 so years that we've had civilization in Europe that's been separate from the church. And of course, we haven't had broad dissemination and of knowledge at all. And so the Christians were able to succeed simply because they had the best stories. They, you know, and if you don't have a movie, you don't have plays, um, it's difficult, right? And you don't have a language that you can disseminate in a way that makes you know people pay attention. You've got a problem because that, in fact, is what, you know, one of the reasons Judaism became quite so popular is because, you know, it was a foundation of the Abrahamic religions. And that's because it had a very interesting legal system that did not exist at the time. Um, the response to that, of course, was Christianity, which, you know, if you look at it, a lot of it is just in opposition to its, its predecessor. When you go into an Orthodox church, you have to cover, you have to take off your hat. You, ha you cannot cover your head. That is reserved for the priesthood. Um, so you see again a very elitist sort of structure. Uh, whereas when you walk into a synagogue, you have to cover your head. So a lot of what happened in Christianity and, and in Catholicism was just in opposition to what came before it. It wasn't necessarily a, a legal system that was designed um, to have any sort of longevity. Um, and, of course, you were in a position at that point where you have uh, 500 years of trying to create a system of laws and finance that's sustainable. But because the Christians delegated finance to their predecessors, um, they had problems coming up with a legal system that made sense. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here so I can finish the rest of the museum. But that's basically a nutshell of European history. Um, and. Ultimately, the idea behind the EU is we can overcome all this history and maybe try to create a society that's, you know, got a lot of the metrics for sustainability, which, again, did not really exist because of the knowledge that was restricted uh, just by different groups, whether it was a king, whether it was a church, and in, and in many cases simply existed uh, out, of a, out of a desire to be in opposition to whatever it was that came before it.